tonight's a very special night. We're in Peoria, Illinois, where we're covering the Miss You Can Do It pageant. This is no ordinary beauty pageant. It provides a literal platform for young girls with special needs to shine like the stars they really are. And we're giving you an inside look at the pageant, the contestants, and the last minute preparations. Plus, we'll be here with our cameras for the final outcome. Stay with us. This is going to be fun. Abby Curran was born with cerebral palsy, a condition affecting her leg, mobility, and stability. But she's never let physical challenges limit her from achieving her dreams. Abby first became interested in beauty pageants during her sophomore year of high school. After receiving discouragement from teachers and peers, she was determined to prove them wrong. Little did she know that participating in a local pageant would start her on a path toward becoming Miss Iowa and making history by competing in the 2008 Miss USA pageant. Abby, tell me about the Miss Iowa pageant of 2008 and what it was like to compete in that. <sighs> the best weekend of my entire life. I can't even describe the girls that I saw. They are the most beautiful, breathtaking girls. It's literally living Barbies surrounded by me. And so I've had them come back to the pageant to judge, and I can't help but be like, I beat her. <laughs> she didn't win until two years later. But they're so pretty, and I wouldn't have imagined that. I don't know how I won. My shoes were falling off. I forgot my makeup. My hair's flat. I'm a sweaty mess. We did an opening number dance. I was horrible. And then I won. And I mean, I'm so thankful for that because it changed my life forever. Well, in those seconds after they announced you as the winner, how did you feel? I mean, I just, I really couldn't believe it. Um, it's, it just gives me chills. They gave me an opportunity and they saw me as somebody more than a girl with a challenge. And it just opened up so many doors for me. They realized that I can speak and I can be successful in business and I can do all of these things instead of classifying me as a disabled girl and pushing me aside. Abby wanted other girls with disabilities to have the same experience and accomplishments she had. She founded the Miss You Can Do It pageant in 2004, a national nonprofit pageant created just for girls and young women with special needs and challenges. It has grown from 10 participants in 2004 to 72 10 years later, and Abby couldn't be more excited about the impact it's having on these very special girls. A challenge is one, one small thing, right? I have so many more problems besides my CP. That's only one of many. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't define who I am. Like, I walk the way that I do, but every day that I walk into school, I, you know, remind my professors and I remind my classmates that I'm going to be the best nurse practitioner there is. And there is no reason why I can't take care of you better than anybody else can just because of the way that I walk. So I want the girls to see that, that Maybe their speech is slower than the normal person, but that doesn't mean their brain is so much better than anybody else's. Or their arm doesn't work as well as someone else's, but that doesn't mean that they can't be the next, you know, president of the United States. What takes place during the day, kind of a summary view? Well, today they are at an amazing castle here, thanks to Dr. Soderstrom. They're going to be surprised by the Disney princesses. We have Snow White, Cinderella, Rapunzel, and Princess Anna, so they'll get to spend the day with them. I know that if you walk around downstairs, there are a bunch of our staff with goodie bags, which include stuffed animals, prizes, jewelry. Um, they're going to do private interviews. They get their hair and makeup done for free. Um, at the Civic Center tonight, they'll compete in casual wear, evening gown, onstage question, and everyone goes home with a crown, everyone goes home with a sash, and everyone goes home with a Build-A-Bear and a huge gift box. What are some of the more memorable moments that you recall from other pageants? Last year, a lot of the girls loved the opening number. They asked for it back this year, and I was so excited because their parents saw that they can walk and move by themselves no parents are allowed on stage. And that these, some of these older girls have always been wanting to do dance or cheerleading or palms, and now their parents are like, hmm, this isn't a bad idea. They can do it, and they can do it. Well, do you realize that you're a role model for all of these girls, and does that feel like a burden to you? I don't know. I just, I just hope that they do remember, I guess, me when they're at home by themselves and think, you know, maybe they want to do something and maybe they're afraid to try it and maybe they're going to do it anyways because I did it first. 
and I already broke the glass ceiling at Miss USA, so I'm just waiting for one of my contestants to tell me that she won a state title and she's going to Miss USA to take home the Miss USA crown. When we return, we'll meet two of the pageant's sparkling contestants. When Deb Albana was five months pregnant, she learned her daughter had a congenital diaphragmatic hernia and was given 50% chance of survival. Michaela's first few weeks of life were quite a struggle. When they tried to um, stabilize her in the first three weeks, um, she um, coded. Okay. And that was the worst day of our <laughs> We were at Ron McDonald House at 5 a.m. and they called and said, you better come on over because we're pretty sure she's not going to make it. Then they came in and said, um, the doctor did something and she's stabilized. So, but even after that, it was touch and go for quite a while. So she had a stroke. It affected the right side of her body. In other words, is what the stroke did. So she has delay on the right side. So with all of that, that is the only long-term effect yes, she's had? actually, yeah. yes. Isn't she's that amazing remarkable? Because, yeah, yeah. She, she was on numerous, she you know, all on, kinds of drugs I can't pronounce and all that stuff. And she was on oxygen for the first year of her life and they were able to wean her off of that. They weren't even sure they were going to be able to wean her off the ventilator and then they were able to. Well, with all of this diagnosed prenatally, did the doctors uh, suggest abortion or talk about that? The doctor, um, asked me when I was at an appointment with my mom if I wanted to um, go ahead with the pregnancy and I said of course yes right. there's no <laughs> I've never ever no she was already my baby <laughs> so. so Mike and Deb what's life like now for Michaela you know it's life is pretty normal for Michaela we just call it slow motion Michaela that's all a lot of things that any other kid um, does. She she loves to horseback ride, um, and she goes, um, or she's in dance class. And she's in the she was in the Special Olympics last year, so she has a very active life. Deb and Mike first learned about the pageant while watching a 2013 HBO special. They knew Michaela would love to be part of such an event. And now she's really looking forward to her busy day of pageant pampering and a night on stage. You've got a busy day scheduled today, so. Yeah. They're going to uh, put makeup on you and make you all pretty. And put, make my, like, my hair and do everything. Doll you all up, huh? Except for I'm going to walk on stage. Are you going to wear a pretty dress? Yeah, I'm going to wear two dresses going to wear the on a dress when they go on stage and I'm going to wear the uh, pink dress with the pageant. Deb, what is it that you're looking forward to most out of today? Oh, just to see her smiling because when she smiles she lights up the whole room and it makes everything that we went through just worth it. Jason and Marie Mullins have been married for nine years and have three children, but their first pregnancy didn't go as planned they learned their daughter would be born with spina bifida. Without any consideration given to abortion, they immediately sought a specialist. Just days after Lillian was born, she endured multiple surgeries. They have continued throughout her life. Lillian's back was closed, a shunt put in her brain, and she's had leg and hip operations. But through it all, Lillian stays positive and lives the life of a happy seven-year-old girl. It's just kind of a normal part of our lives, I think. It's not fun, we don't enjoy it, but if it's to improve her life. Help. Mm -hmm. What's life like now for Lillian? Tell them a little bit about your life. I like to play with my Barbie dolls. I like to go on the computer. I like to color. I like to go to school. You love school. Yeah. Tell them what Mrs. Rhodes said about your reading. It was, I was the top reader in my class, don't tell anybody. She was the top reader in her first grade class, don't tell anybody. 
So um, you've got braces and a walker that you can use, but why do you want to use those if you can use your chair? Because I like to walk around <laughs> and run. You like the independence? I like to walk around and run. Yep. Well, Marie, how did you find out about the pageant and what was it that made Lillian want to be part of it? I remember I saw it on yeah. TV. <laughs> Dad turned it to HBO. He's like, hey, check it out, Lily. This girl has a walker too. And, and so we, look, we were watching it and her jaw just kind of dropped. Mommy, I want to be in a beauty pageant. And I'm like, okay. And she's been excited ever since. What do you guys as parents hope that Lillian takes away from this pageant? Same thing we always try to teach her. You can do whatever you want. I tell her that all the time. I say, you have limitations, but you can adapt and you know you can do or be what you want to be and this pageant is a wonderful opportunity for confidence building making friends that kind of know the similar struggles and and that's what i would say i think it's just an experience for her I to would find to joy in the same thing. you know we'll find out what she really enjoys simple. to do but it's just a more of a learning experience from her to find out what she really enjoys as a person in a moment, we'll hear from the parents of two very special sisters. Anne and Todd Hollis were already the parents of two young sons when they welcomed daughter Meg into their lives. Shortly after she was born, they learned Meg had Down syndrome. Though shocked at first, they quickly dedicated themselves to learning all they could and investing themselves into their new little girl. Soon after, they decided to add to their family by adopting a little girl with Down syndrome from southern Ukraine named Alina. Noah and Caleb are 18 months apart, and they are the best of friends. They play together, they're playing ball in the yard all the time. They have each other on this journey through life. And our town is a, it's a small town, and at the time, Meg was the only child in town with Down syndrome. And um, I thought about her as on her journey through life, knowing Caleb have each other, and, and of course she would have them too, but I wanted a sister for her. I'll bet they questioned your sanity when you came over there for the purpose of adopting a child with special needs. Her room, uh, her group, Alina was the only child with Down syndrome. Most of the kids were typical. So there was some question of why, you know, that one of the workers said to Ann, why are you, you stupid Americans? Why do you spend all this money on a child that doesn't have any worth? And it's just a different mindset. I mean, it really is a different mindset that is in our country. What kind of response did you have for them? Well, I think I simply just said, you know, we believe every child has worth. Every, every person has worth. And, you know, she's gonna do great and grow and thrive and, um, she has done that even more than we could have imagined. Tell me about Alina and Meg. Oh, Alina and Meg, they are the best of friends and they fight like sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's one of those things that I can pick on my sister, but don't you pick on my sister. Um, and it's so fun to just kind of watch them grow together and uh, their, their relationship. In April of 2011, uh, there was an awful act of vandalism against your family and against your home. Tell me about that. Uh, it was a normal school day. We had loaded up in the car, we're backing out, and I hit the garage door, it started to go down, and I, I saw graffiti on the garage door. And as soon as I saw that, I, I also happened to be, her, her car was parked outside, I saw that her car had been spray painted too. That's probably the first thing I saw. So the first thing I did was I hit the garage door, so it went back up, because I didn't want the kids to see it. It was pretty foul. You know, there was, um, you know, get out of town retards. I remember standing there that day and just looking at it and thinking, like, how are we here as a society? Like in 2011, how is this still okay? And I think that, you know, we have made the best of this story. So much good has come from it. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, whoever did it, their intent was to hurt us and they did, you know? But all they really did in the end was grow the army of people who love and support us. And, you know, I feel like Meg and Alina and our family are probably safer now in that town because so many people look out for us. It just helped us raise awareness and helped us to fight a level of intolerance and, and ignorance and hate 
um, and, and bring it to the surface and have people say, this, I won't stand for this. The Hollis family has been very involved with their local Easter Seals organization to provide programs and education for their girls and learned about Miss You Can Do It through Easter Seals and knew it would be the perfect opportunity for her girls to feel like princesses and to see others with special needs and challenges just like them. What do you think Meg and Alina will take from this experience that they're having? Some new friends. They'll certainly, you know, they were, they were making new friends last night. And a little more self-confidence um, that I, I think is, is good for them. Um, and a little more independence. What do you see for the girls' future? I remember on the day that Meg was born, one of the doctors came in and uh, as he was giving me a list of things she would never do, he said, she'll never read, she'll never write, she'll never ride a bike, she'll never, and he gave, gave me a very long list of things that um, she would never do. And his final words to me were, you know, with a lot of hard work and some luck, these people can do things like greet at Walmart. And then he got up and walked out. And um, Meg reads at grade level, she rides a bike, she can write her name, and she's eight. As long as she's working to her fullest potential, if her fullest potential is greeting at a store, great. But if she's capable of more than that, then we're gonna push her to do more than that. You know, we have college savings plans for the girls. Mm -hmm. There are 200 universities in the country that have residential programs for young adults with disabilities. So I think in the end, you need to celebrate effort above ability. Like Ann said, if, if they're doing their absolute best, that's how we want to judge them. Coming up, we'll learn how the Miss You Can Do It pageant is helping people reevaluate their ideas of beauty. The Miss You Can Do It pageant is growing and helping more girls feel beautiful and confident in their own skin. It provides memorable experiences and encouragement for parents and their daughters who are often told what they won't be able to accomplish. Abby hopes the pageant is helping people reevaluate their ideas of beauty, both inside and out. They have an onstage question. And the girls are so smart and they're so beautiful from the inside out. They say things, their one wish. Um, you know, most people would say, I want to live in a castle. I want to have a pony. And these girls just want to fit in. They just want to run with their friends. Or some of them wish for a friend. And that's very heartbreaking. And, and you just realize how amazing and sensitive and smart they are. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and abilities. And it, again, it's, it's about effort and it's about being comfortable with who you are. That's what beauty is. And that is such the blessing of, of a child with a disability is that you know they, they're willing to share and they, and they are comfortable with who they are. And um, all they're asking is that you accept that. And really that is, I think, what any of us are asking. I think being a mom to daughters with special needs has really made me more comfortable with my own skin and realizing I don't have to be perfect. I don't. I just, you know, it's not about having this perfect child. Really, it's about being a mom that my kids are proud of. What do you want people to know about Michaela and the other participants? Uh, they're very strong individuals and they're stronger than uh, me, me and you. They're just very strong and very intelligent and beautiful children. They're all beautiful. Yeah. special in their own ways and their people. I think other people forget when they see something like a chair or a different gait when they're walking or a, a walker or crutches. For a lot of people, that's the first thing they see. I want them to see the people. Their children, their young adults, their people first. I'd like everybody to see the joy on all these yes. girls' face. See that See how, how excited and enthralled they are with, with, with what they're doing and yeah, I'm the opportunity so excited. that they have. And I am really excited to go see those new princesses. I bet you are. <laughs> yeah. She's got a gift with, with people. 
she doesn't know someone who's not her friend. She's got a big heart and this personality that just shines and radiates and people want to be around her. She's touched a lot of lives already in seven years. I can't imagine how many more will be touched by you. I don't, I'm pretty sweet, so probably <laughs> like... Yeah. A bazillion. Twice as many as bazillion. Okay, two, two bazillion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I call it the circle of dreams, but I think we all have a dream come true only so we can pass it on to someone else and make their dreams a reality. If I wouldn't have won Miss Iowa, I probably wouldn't have continued the pageant as big as I have. And since someone granted me my dream come true, I can pass so many dreams on to the girls downstairs and hopefully they'll be happy and confident and be able to continue passing on dreams to other people. The awards have all been handed out and yet the applause still seems to echo in this auditorium. Happy contestants are headed home with their families, blessed for having been here. The crew and I have really enjoyed working with everybody involved, and my hope for you is that you never look at people with special needs in the same way, that instead you see them as the shining stars that they all can be. Thanks for watching. Every one of us has the ability to shine bright and confident like the girls participating in the Miss You Can Do It pageant. Recognize the shining star in your life with this beautiful necklace. Visit our website at facinglife.tv and enter for your chance to receive it as my special free gift to you. While there, check out additional resources related to today's program and get more information on the pageant. Also, find out how you can get a copy of today's episode on DVD or Blu-ray. I know it's one you'll want to share with others.